So continuing with our calculations involving titrations. So here we have a solution that's comprised of 35 milliliters of 0.17 molar hydrofluoric acid uh, solution and is titrated with 0.11 molar lithium hydroxide. So what's the pH after 40.5 milliliters of lithium hydroxide are added? And it gives us the Ka of the weak acid, 3.6 to 10 negative 4. So the first thing you should always do when doing a problem like this is determine the moles of weak acid and moles of strong base. And so if your moles of weak acid are greater than your moles of strong base, this is going to be in the buffer region of the weak acid strong base titration, which means you're going to use the henderson hasselbalch uh, equation. The other scenario is, is the moles of weak acid equal to moles of strong base, which indicates that you're at the equivalence point, and there you'd have to determine the pH, similar to how we did for a weak base solution. And then the third scenario is, is that the moles of hydroxide exceed the moles of uh, weak acid. In that case, you're beyond the equivalence point, so you would need to determine the moles of hydroxide left over, convert that to concentration, and then find the pOH and then the pH. So here you see that the moles of weak acid are greater than the moles of strong base. So we're going to be using the buffer equation because we're in the buffer region. So we're going to need the pKa as well. So now that we have this, we need to find the concentration of HF and F minus that are present after we add the 40.5 milliliters of lithium hydroxide. So we set up our uh, equation. So we start with the moles of HF, the moles of hydroxide. We subtract the moles of hydroxide from HF and add it to F minus. And then at equilibrium, you see that all we have left is the moles of HF and moles of F minus. So now we need to determine the new volume. So we got to add the volume of weak acid we had plus the volume of strong base that we added. Convert this to liters. Now we can find the concentration of weak base and weak acid. Once we have the concentration of each, we can plug it into the Henderson Hasselbalch equation and solve for the pH. So the pH is about 3.67. So again, the way we knew to use the buffer equation is because the moles of weak acid are greater than the moles of strong base added. And the second uh, problem that we worked on here, we again, we have the same uh, weak acid solution. We have 35 milliliters of a 0.17 molar hydrofluoric solution. Again, titrated with 0.11 molar lithium hydroxide. What's the pH after 54.1 milliliters of lithium hydroxide are added? So again, the first step, determine the moles of weak acid and moles of strong base. So here we see that the moles of weak acid equal the moles of strong base. So this tells us we're at the equivalence point. And so if we're at the equivalence point, we need to de determine the pH by determining the pH of a weak base solution. So we're going to need to know the Kb of the solution, or Kb of the weak base. So we know that the pKa and the Ka was 3.2. So that's the pKa. If we subtract it from 14, we get the pKb, and then 10 to the negative pKb gives us the Kb. And again, the reason we need a Kb is because the moles of weak acid equal the moles of strong base, which means we're at the equivalence point, which therefore means we have to calculate the pH of a solution like we would for that of a weak base solution. So that's why we needed the Kb for this problem. So now what we need to know is, is that since we have moles of weak acid equal moles of strong base, the moles of fluoride are going to be the same. So all of the strong base is going to react with all of the weak acid to form this many moles of weak base. And we're going to find the total volume. So the volume of the weak acid, <clears throat> the volume of the strong base, we get the volume of the solution, then we can find the concentration of the weak base. 
once we have the concentration of the weak base, we have its KB. Then we set this up just like we would to calculate the pH of a weak base solution. So initially we start with this concentration, the change, of course, minus X plus X plus X, and then equilibrium. Now you can negate this minus X because the KB of F minus is a lot smaller than the initial concentration of F minus. So then we set it up. Sorry, I don't need this. This is extra here. My bad. There we go. Don't need that. So we set it up. We solve for X. And we get X to be 1.03 or 1.027 times 10 to the negative 6. X is also the hydroxide ion concentration. We can find the pOH. And then we can find the pH. So the pH of this at the equivalence point is 8.01. So now the latter part of this chapter, we talked about buffers, we talked about titrations, then it talks about uh, KSP or the molar solubility of an ionic compound. And so here one of the things uh, we can calculate is the expression for the molar solubility of a particular ionic compound. So when we write the uh, equilibrium dissociation of a ionic compound, it looks something like this. So we have silver chromate is a solid. It dissociates into silver plus and chromate ions. And so from this, we can get the uh, molar solubility expression for this uh, compound. So again, initially, since silver chromate is a solid, we can say initially it's one. The products are zero. So we have minus X for the reactant, plus 2X for silver plus, and plus X for chromate. At equilibrium, we get this. Now, since silver chromate is a solid, we can disregard it in the equilibrium expression. Now, before I write the equilibrium expression, one thing we got to remember is that the KSP equals the concentration of silver plus squared times the concentration of chromate. And so the concentration of silver plus at equilibrium is 2x. The concentration of chromate is x. So then we get k equals 2x squared times x, and this simplifies to 4x cubed. So if you know the KSP, the equilibrium constant for the association of silver chromate, you can calculate its molar solubility. Now with aluminum hydroxide, again, we write its dissociation equation. Aluminum hydroxide breaks apart into aluminum ion and three hydroxide ions. Initially, we set the reactant to one because it's a solid. We have minus X for every one mole of aluminum hydroxide. We produce one mole of aluminum and three moles of hydroxide. And again, at equilibrium, we can negate the one minus X because it's a solid and we get. Remember the KSP expression is aluminum. Cube. So it's the concentration of aluminum times the concentration of hydroxide cubed. So therefore we get oops, this expression K equals X times 3X cubed. It simplifies to 27X to the fourth. And so if we know the KSP of aluminum hydroxide, we can calculate the molar solubility of aluminum hydroxide. Note that the smaller the KSP or the K, the less soluble the compound is. And then lastly, we have iron three carbonate. Again, the first thing we want to do is, is write the dissociation. So for every one mole of iron three carbonate, we get two moles of iron three plus three moles of carbonate. So initially we have one of the reactant zero zero. 
for every one mole of iron three carbonate we dissociate we form two moles of iron three plus and three moles of carbonate and at equilibrium again we can negate the one minus x and so the ksp expression for iron three carbonate would be the equilibrium concentration of iron three carbonate squared times the equilibrium concentration of carbonate cubed. So when we plug in those expressions, we get K equals two X squared times three X cubed. And we get K equals 108 uh, X to the fifth. So if you know the KSP, for iron three carbonate, you can calculate the molar solubility of it. And this is how you determine the molar solubility expression for different types of ionic compounds. And again, the smaller the KSP, the more, or I should say the less soluble your salt is. And in this example, or this problem, we want to calculate the actual uh, KSP for each of these solutions. So again, on the previous slide, we, we determined their molar solubility expressions. Here we want to calculate the actual molar solubility of silver chromate and aluminum hydroxide. So again, just to kind of recap, we take the dissociation equation we can find the molar solubility expression, which we did on the previous problem. So we said K equals four X cubed. So if we know the value of K, we can calculate the molar solubility of silver chromate. So then we plug K in, we solve for X, we get X equals 8.7 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. So what this means is that if your concentration of silver chromate is less than 8.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, it will, it will be an uh, unsaturated solution or it will dissolve into solution. Once you exceed 8.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, it will not go into solution. You've exceeded its solubility. With aluminum hydroxide, again, we set up the dissociation equation. We can get the KSP expression, just like we did in the previous problem. We plug in K and we solve for X. And since the K here is smaller, you see that the molar solubility is less than that of silver chromate. Now, again, this is the molar solubility in water. Next time when we look at this, we'll be looking at the molar solubility when we have a common ion present.